This is Trisha. Her uh, family is from El Salvador, and that's what she's doing her speech on today. So let's give her a hand. All right. Have you guys ever thought about drinking your Coca-Cola in a bag with a straw? No. No. Okay. In El Salvador, they actually do that in order to recycle their glass bottles. If you go to a store, because they don't really use pop cans so much or plastic bottles, they give you a glass bottle, and if you want to take it with you, you put it in a baggie with a straw and you get it go. It's not even wrapped or anything. If you drop it, it's gone forever. So, um, according to my audience analysis survey, more than half of you knew that El Salvador was a country, but only four out of ten could actually point to it on a map. So, I mean, being it's a little bit, I think, smaller than the size of of the state of Massachusetts, you know, it's not that big of a deal because it is really small, so most people don't know where it's at. Um, my family is from El Salvador. We go and visit a lot of times. I mean, I, I think the last time I was there was maybe when I was 12 or 14. No, it was 2001 where there was like a couple earthquakes while we were there. It's very interesting, so. Um, I know a lot about the culture. I have family there. And what I'm here to talk to you about is the three components of the Salvadoran culture. And the three components that I want to talk about are religion, the arts, and food. So we'll start off with religion. Um, religion is crucial to Salvadorian culture, as it is to Mexico and most um, Central American countries. Catholicism is the main religion there. Um, according to the CIA Factbook Online, um, Catholicism makes up 83% of religion there. My mom's favorite example of like um, Christmas time in El Salvador which is something you don't see here, is they'll, they'll be little kids dressed up in like um, garb from you know old times, like they'll be dressed in robes and stuff, and they'll be carrying around a little. Sometimes they do actually carry on a, around a real baby, but most of the times it's a fake baby. And they carry it around from house to house, mostly in the countryside. Um, it's called posada, and they take them around and uh, ask for shelter for the baby at each house. And well, they don't really get shelter because they go to like a million houses in one night, but they get food and you know drinks and all kinds of stuff at each house they stop at. So that's something nice there. Um, besides uh, Catholicism, there's a lot. There's a growing number of Protestants in El Salvador, and uh, the fact book also estimates that by the end of 1992, there were more than a million Protestants in El Salvador. So 92, 2007, there's probably a lot more now. Um, Besides religion, arts is also a big part of the culture there. Music, there's two main types of music that you can listen to there. I mean, there's obviously plenty, but there's two main ones. One is cumbia, which is kind of a salsa type dance, but it's not salsa. It's, it's kind of a tropical sound that it has. And the other one is reggaeton, which is a newer kind of type of music that's being, it's more in the younger generations. That's kind of like your hip hop mixed with reggae type music, and it's yeah fun. So, and aside from um, music, arts are also in the ceramics. Uh, El Salvador is known for a lot of ceramics. My mom, when I actually interviewed her, she told me that Ilo Vasco, which is the name of the town she's from, is actually best known for its ceramics. And I actually have an aunt there that has a store, so I brought these. These are actually made out of ceramic. If I drop these, they'll break. So, um, the little mangoes, and they make all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's mostly, it feels like this, being hollow, and I don't know how they get them to be hollow, but I don't know anything about it. But my aunt sells these in her store, and they're really cheap. I mean, if you were to go to El Salvador and buy, like, there's really tall vases that are made out of, you know, clay, and they look so nice, and they're really cheap, too. So. Um, this is another thing, the crafts that they make. This did have a little barrel here that you put the pen in, but it's, it's missing a notepad too. But that's another thing that I have. Um, and again, nothing beats the art of food. And we all love food, right? So um, my favorite food from El Salvador is called the pupusa, and I have a picture of it. I know it sounds funny, pupusa, but um, they're actually made, the outside is made out of cornmeal, I guess. I guess it's cornmeal. It's a thin layer, and it has usually beans. It'll, it can, can be stuffed with cheese. Um, there's a plant called loroco, which is a little green plant that they also put in it sometimes. And it's always served. This is not a drink. This is salsa served in a glass. And then there's curtido, which is kind of a version of sauerkraut, I guess. It doesn't have pickles, I don't think, because I don't like pickles. So um, 
that's my favorite food from El Salvador. Um, I also read a book by Boland called um, Culture and Customs of El Salvador, and it its example of a campesino meal, which is like countryside meal, was beans, tortillas, and salt. Not too interesting. I know they eat a lot of beans and tortillas, but usually, you know, add cheese or cream or something to it. Not so much just salt. So, also the drinks, like I mentioned, the cokes in the bags, they do that to recycle the bottle. And then you take. Sometimes you'll buy like a liter bottle that you can take home, and you have to take that bottle back. And they give you back a deposit for it. And that's why most people always, when it's to go, they give it to you in a baggie, which is kind of nice. I came back and I served myself in a baggie here, so. Um, coffee is a major export of El Salvador, and kids in El Salvador actually from the age of, I'd say, four or five on, drink coffee, which is something weird to me because I don't like coffee. So it, it is one of their major exports, though, so that would be why. Horchata is another drink that they have. Um, Boland's description of it was a drink made from, a, from the seed of a native gourd, oftentimes um, flavored with cocoa or milk. And I think of it here, I think here they, sell, they serve it in a lot of restaurants, but they call it just a, a rice drink. Rice, I don't know, it's pretty good. Um, so I hope I didn't make you too hungry talking about food. I doubt the native gourd makes you too hungry. But in conclusion, there are three components to the Salvadorian culture. And as I said, those were religion, the arts, and food. So I hope you learned a bit of foreign culture, and maybe next time that you want to drink a Coke, you'll serve it to yourself in a baggie with a straw, and it tastes the same. It's just kind of nice. Um, and by the way, El Salvador is in that part of the world, right next to Guatemala and Honduras, so that next time you guys can know how to point to it on a map, OK? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, are you planning on going back any time soon? My mom's going to Maine, but I'm not. I wish I would. <laughs> Still be during school time, I think. And then there's a lot of crime there nowadays, so I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give her another hand.